Today's Patreon dedication is for Jason Belk. Thank you, Jason. The Michael Tyrant versus Sahili. Been looking at building Sahili myself, so I'm not sure if you'll see it this week or not, but as for this hand, only doing anything on turn three, so we're gonna get punished for mulliganing this one, probably. Uh, okay, missing some black mana, but hopefully can get into the Cultivate. And yeah, we'll try this. Get rid of the Grave Pact. It's good when we're up against a newer commander because not only can I get some tips and tricks from my opponent who has built that deck, but also I don't mind whether we win or lose. Don't really mind the outcome of this game because either way we're going to see a new commander go off. Alright, Reflecting Pool will fix green mana. Would be nice to get into black for the Jadar, but we'll aim for the Cultivate next turn. Arcane Signet for our opponent. Six cards in hand. And we just need to hope that he doesn't counter this Cultivate. Oh, that went through really quickly, so that suggests that our opponent doesn't have any counter magic. A Court of Ventress entering play. I think this has just been added to Magic Online, so our opponent becomes the Monarch, goes up to six cards in hand. So, uh, do we take the Monarchy right now? With the Aheni, I was looking to get down the Jadar, but can play a land, Sky Shroud, Claim, and Yeheni. Or we can go for Spore Mound, then play Sky Shroud, Claim. And your Henny next turn, and that will get us some Sepralings into play. I think I'd rather go fast and take the Monarchy. And the reason I'm playing your Henny is because it has haste, so we can take the Monarchy straight away. I'm sure our opponent doesn't expect haste against a Golgari deck. Draw into another land could do with a fetch, because we've got the Ramming App available to us now, and that obviously goes really well with the Spore Mound. And the Court of Ventress becomes a copy of the Arcane Signet. Then a Petraea Seal will be able to untap this Aheli. No means of haste for our opponent yet. But there is the commander, so are we to assume that they can protect it? Probably best to start getting some creatures sacrificed now, so we'll play out the Spore Mound. And yeah, our opponent's holding up priority here. Get down the Jadar as well, which comes down quickly. Drop a land into the enchantment, makes our first Saproling. And we can turn in sideways with the Aheni, because it can have Indestructible. I said the enchantment. There is an enchantment variant of this. This is the creature version, obviously. So Jadar and the Monarchy Trigger will get a Decayed Zombie we can swing in with next turn. And draw a card as well. And there is a Polluted Delta for the Landfall. Now the Arcane Signet, or the, uh, what's it called? The Court of Ventress becoming a copy of the Seal. So, can untap the Sahili multiple times. Not where the Academy Ruins is in play as well. And now seeing a Meteor Golem from our opponent, not able to make a copy of it thankfully, so if we can get into some removal here I'll be happy. Getting rid of the Fungus, so uh, didn't get into the Polluted Delta in time unfortunately. Sacrifice it to make the Yeheni indestructible, we might as well. Alright, and there's a Skull Clamp for us, which could be a hell of a draw, so I think we definitely want the Myco Tyrant down here. So Skull Clamp onto the Zombie. Uh, we'll make another one of those at the end of the turn. Sacrifice that with your Henny. We'll draw us a couple of cards. We've got a Mesmeric Orb as well. And a Black Market Connections. So uh, play the Polluted Delta. I think getting down the Black Market Connections is alright. But probably best trying to draw into removal for that Meteor Golem first. Okay, Cryptolith right and a Belladros Witherbloom. So just focus on getting down the Mesmeric Orb this turn maybe. Yeah, I think we have to give up on the Jadar, unfortunately, because we're going to lose our stuff anyway. Might as well try and get into something, but yeah, no means of removal, so crack the Polluted Delta. Haven't had time to get into the tap land, unfortunately. Luckily, we've got an untapped land with the Swamp. Play ourselves a Mesmeric Orb and pass the turn. Draw a card with the Monarchy. And we descended with the Myco Tyrant, so we get a couple of Fungus. Drew into Fecundity, which is more card draw, so... Yeah, just getting rid of a Forest should be fine, seeing as how we've got Ramming App and the Cryptolith, right? Our opponent mills, thanks to untapping. So now Sahili gonna get to abuse the Meteor Golem here. Makes a copy of Meteor Golem, blowing up the Mesmeric Orb. We got to distract them away with at least one trigger. But they've got a couple more activations here. Or actually, I don't, I'm not sure they have the colours actually, as it happens. Untapping the Sahili. Make another Meteor Golem. This time going after the Commander, as you would expect, so... Sacrifice that. <laughs> now Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. And again, it is the Meteor Golem. Should go after the Skull Clamp. And they do. 
And then swinging in, might as well just block one. These are going to get sacrificed anyway, but we're not going to be able to keep anything in play until we can deal with either the commander or the meteor golem. They take the monarchy away from us. And it's noteworthy that with Sahili they are sacrificed. So uh, we get a plus counter on the Aheni. They're not exiled, you'll get death triggers as well. Also not worthy that with our commander, not sure if I pointed it out, but it doesn't trigger on tokens. Decided to go for a token build anyway because, you know, it's Saprolings and it's token aristocrat shenanigans. The fungus and the Saprolings still aren't quite there for commander, so there are one or two commanders that you can make work with it, but for the most part it's not quite there yet so just went with a generic token build all right so here we've got the belladros with a bloom i think should be fine still not getting into any removal and then we can play as a saga that will add a colorless and then throw out the fecundity maybe although that works well with the um with the meteor golems getting sacrificed so maybe just black market connections here and then we pay a bunch of life into the belladros in order to untap everything so let's go for the Lolth Spider Queen. Take that down, should be fine. To get down the spiders. And play out the Fecundity. Like I said, it's going to work in our opponent's favour as well, but we're going to have to turn in sideways with the Fungus anyway to steal the Monarchy away. So yeah, might as well do this with our uh, Planeswalker in play because it'll get more loyalty. So blocking a couple of Fungus might as well. Uh, yeah, might as well sacrifice here to make it indestructible, just in case that's of any relevance. So, draw a card to the Fecundity, and the Lolth will get a Loyalty Counter. Okay, drawn into the Sylvan Library, and drawn into a Woodland Cemetery, as well as stealing the Monarchy away. Yeah, so if we give our opponent enough permanence to worry about, I'm going to get down the Sylvan Library instead of the Cryptolith Rite. We're not going to be making use of the mana anyway, and uh, that's a good target to go after with the Meteor Golem. Draw a card, that gets us into Terra Sunder, which, yeah, if we hadn't got down the Silver Library, I could have played that here. How is this worded? Untap all lands you control only once each turn. Okay, so we could go for it now, but our opponent can do things at instant speed anyway, so, yeah, okay, we'll let our opponent do what he's doing. Making a copy of the Meteor Golem, that is a copy of Sakashima, so that makes the Meteor Golem come down. And blows up the Fecundity. Alright, they could have gained card draw from that, but feel as though we're going to make more use of it. They can untap the Sahili on the stack, so yeah, it's difficult to interact with it at the moment. Talisman of Creativity into play. Four cards in our opponent's hand. And now the Seal untapping the Commander. So uh, we could make it so that they get one less activation, because if we go for it here, they won't have a chance to untap. Yeah, let's go for the Belladros. Means we're going down to 14, we've taken 20 life to that. And then we'll tear asunder onto the commander. Successfully getting rid of the commander, they could have untapped it in response. This isn't a sorcery thing, is it? No, so they could have had another activation there, but decided to let it go. Maybe just wanting to make sure they get their commander back into play this turn. Yep, down comes Sahili again. We have shuffled the Grave Pact around since putting it on the bottom of the library at the beginning of the turn, so it's kind of the type of card we're hoping for at this point. We will block with a pest token to gain a bit of life. And it's more loyalty on the lolf. Another plus counter on your henny when they sacrifice at the end of the turn. Another pest token for us. And we're going to draw to the Sylvan Library because they didn't take advantage of those Meteor Golems. So uh, yes, and yield to the Sylvan Library. Alright, more card draw. There's a uh, Shamanic Revelation and a Toski. I think we're fine to get both of those in hand and we can throw away the Misty Rainforest and then we'll want to shuffle that away with the Bloodstained Mire um, as a Saga going to be able to make a Construct if we want to but we don't have all that many artifacts in place so probably won't bother just make a treasure whilst we've got quite a low life total shuffle with the Mire and we're forced to get the tap land now so might as well tick down on the Lolth I don't think we care particularly about getting the emblem yeah it's one or more creatures if this happened with each creature then it'd be incredible but it's only ever eight damage you deal with that so you know we'll just go for the the uh, card advantage here play the shamanic revelation which will actually gain us a bit of life as well gets us into liliana dreadhorde general sakura tribe elder as well 
And there we go, a little bit of Saproling shenanigans. But I think if we can, yeah, we'll go for the Liliana, Dreadhorde General. We'll see if our opponent wants to block an onward attack. Because if he can, then we'll be able to edict the other two creatures. So swing in with Belladros and Yeheni. Might want to block the Yeheni. Decide against it. So we'll get down at the Liliana and have our opponent edict two creatures away. Uh, we can just go for a Pest and a Summoning Six Spider. And it's more loyalty on the Lolth. The Sakashima Meteor Golem is being kept. We'll draw a couple more to the Lily as well as get more buffs on Yeheni. Alright, but still not getting into any removal. It's a pretty fun game. Why don't we just go for the 10 life into the Belladros again? We haven't seen too much of our commander yet, so let's go for that. Actually haven't kept track of how many permanents we've lost here. Uh, yeah, I think it's only the Bloodstained Maya, so let's go for the Sakura Tribe Elder and crack that. Is this at the beginning of our end step? Yeah, it's at the beginning of our end step, so we'll have to crack the Sakura Tribe Elder now. Typically want to do that at the end of our opponent's turn. But that will trigger the Lily as well. There's a Necromancy. No, there's actually no basics left, so I have to up the basics count in this tech, apparently. So let's get down Namata here, just for the fun of it. I'm assuming our opponent's got something for us, otherwise he typically wouldn't be playing it out. Typically for a Magic Online player, I mean. So Michael Tyrant going to make some Saprolings. And yep, it was a Fetch and a Sakura Tribe Elder that went down. So I only get two of those. We still have the monarchy, so drawing into another land. And the Court of Ventress becomes a copy of the Sylvan Library. And that does happen during the upkeep. Sylvan Library triggers during the draw step, so they're going to see what they can get from us here. Is it Signet? Five cards left in hand. And our opponent just decides to hold back. Has six, seven, eight, nine mana available. We get into another means of Saprolings, the Tender Shoot Dryad, Lord Skitter, a means of token production, Meat Hook Massacre, I'll probably just pay with zero going into X. Um, yeah, we need to be careful of life, so let's just put these two on top. I wouldn't play the Tender Shoot Dryad anyway, because we're waiting on a board wipe at this point. So as a Saga going to trigger, that will shuffle up our library. The Black Market Connections can just be a treasure again. Oh, and should have floated a mana with the um, Urza Saga there. Uh, let's go for... Yeah, an Expedition map should be fine. Yeah, like I said, we could have floated that for mana before it was sacrificed. Forgot to do it. Yeah, so let's go for Meat Hook Massacre for 0 into X before I forget again. Because we do want to be gaining life if we can. And this is whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life. So we'll see what our opponent can do here. Yep, does have the Cyclonic Rift. Necromancy can bring back the Meteor Golem. The Meteor Golem can go after the Sakashima. And that will be exiled thanks to the Namata. So that will make a token anyway. And now let's go for some sacrifices. Sacrifice our opponent's Meteor Golem. We'll have to do that at the end of the turn anyway because Necromancy was cast at instant speed. And when we do this we'll add loyalty to Lolth and we will draw with Lily as well. Alright, so with that done, let's now go for sacrificing the expedition map. We can get ourselves the um, Urborg with that. Might as well use the treasure. And then uh, why don't we just sacrifice a bunch of creatures here so that we can draw cards. Yeah, our opponent's got the Rift just in the nick of time. The Zulaport Cutthroat into play now as well. Can't afford the life on the Belladros, unfortunately. Okay, we've drawn into a Court of Calling as well. There's Beseju, which could be handy. Just wondering if we can do anything with the Court of Calling. Could maybe get Blood Artist into play, but we don't have enough tokens available to us now. But that would gain us life to untap with the Belladros, so might actually be worth doing. If we're going to sacrifice these anyway, we might as well. Alright, so X is currently 2. I'm hoping that the Blood Artist is still in the uh, in the deck. Alright, yeah, there it is, the Blood Artist. So get that down, and then we'll carry on with the Sacrificing. So now on the stack is Blood Artist, Lolth continuing to get Loyalty, which won't be relevant. Lily is obviously drawing us cards as well. Okay, so we need to be careful of what we want to actually bounce back to our opponent's hand, or have our opponent bounce back to our hand. Uh, let's go for the Beseju onto the Sylvan Library. 
This might make it so that they can actually hold up counter magic, but we'll do it anyway. Alright, they go for a mountain as opposed to blue mana. So now let's float some mana. We're at 13 life, so we'll have to pray that there's no lightning bolt. That would be a funny way to go down anyway. So we'll pay into the Belladros to untap all our stuff. And allow the Cyclonic Rift to go off. The Meat Hut Massacre will finally come down. And now let's see what we can do here. Play the Zulaport Cutthroat. Play out the Blood Artist again. Play the Bastion of Remembrance. Get down the Yeheni. And we'll get down our commander as well. We did sacrifice the Namata. So that will trigger once, I think. Yeah, we haven't cracked a fetch or anything. Uh, so we can do that right now, actually. Instead of playing the Urborg, let's go for the Misty Rainforest. Crack that. We know that there's no lands to get with that anymore because I haven't put enough basics in the deck. And now I can swing in with haste at my opponent. So that will knock him down to five. And then let's just sacrifice the human soldier that came in with the Bastion. That will drain our opponent for four, thanks to all the aristocrat shenanigans. And then we go through to the end step. We are still the Monarchs, so the Myco Tyrant will trigger. We'll draw a card as well. Our opponent's down to one, so... Make a bunch of fungus tokens. Must have, um... Yeah, must have sacrificed more permits than I realised there, but... Anyway, make a bunch of fungus and sacrifice that last one in order to drain our opponent, so yeah, it's not a sapriling deck like I would like it to be, but I really don't think that we could compete with the more powerful commanders on Magic Online, and especially in 1v1, but the Myco Tyrant is a really fun one regardless, and hopefully, in a slightly less interactive game, we'll be able to get some of the sapriling interactions going, like with the, um, the one that gives plus three plus three and makes a sapriling every turn. We saw it previously and I think I scried it away. Anyway, hopefully you all enjoyed this Mako Tyrant gameplay. Huge thank you to the patrons as ever. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.